So, here we are again, doing our fourth edition of Easy Over Maze, refining dining. Um, in this case, we wanted to do kind of like a fun catch, clean, and cook. We went fishing in our local ocean, you know, the Atlantic right down here in South Florida, about seven miles out. And, you know, we fished for some great species. We, you know, we caught some grouper, we caught some porgy, and some snapper, various races and whatnot. And, you know, but we were able to catch a couple really cool fish while we were out and about this time around that we thought would be great for this uh, episode that we're gonna call Two Poisons, Two Delicious. Now, the first one was the long spine squirrel fish. Now, its dorsal fin and its ventral fins both have the ability to inject poison. So, you know, it can be really dangerous to touch, not to mention its scales are like glass shards. Thus, a lot of local fishermen like to call it the razor fish. Um, so we went ahead and cooked one of those up. It's absolutely delicious. And then we also caught a trunk fish, which is a very popular item. Uh, in the Caribbean islands, uh, especially in Trinidad, Tobago, and of course my wife's home country of Jamaica. Um, so we uh, went ahead and we cooked up some buck buck fish while we were at it. Um, so what you're gonna see here is just the way we catch, clean, cook it, um, how we do some of the sides, um, careful preparation, and just some you know fun, refined uh, you know ideas and some great flavor profiles we put together. If you guys would like to see something unique, whether it be a uh, game, whether it be fish, whether it be fowl, it doesn't matter what it is. I can get a hold of that thing. Just you know, comment below. Let me know what you think of what we're doing and what you'd like to see. Uh, in addition, don't forget to share, like, subscribe. You know, show your boy some love. Uh, in addition to that, I want to go ahead and show a little love to our sponsor, Kutara Knives. I want to thank them again for that Hakun cleaver, which we just keep finding new uses for. Um, other than that, guys, let's see you at the uh, table. You'll notice how these dorsal fins are all very sharp. Each one of those are able to easily puncture your skin, injecting a little bit of poison and creating a lot of pain and a lot of irritation. It's not going to kill you, but it's definitely not worth uh, having to deal with. And then in addition, you see those scales I just showed you. Those are like little pieces of glass, so those will easily slice you open. So you'll notice I'm continuously wiping them off on the napkin and also using that paper towel as a buffer between the scales of my fingers just to make sure I'm staying safe. I want to make sure that none of those scales get on my meat. That way we don't actually cook those up and then consume them at a later date. So this uh, fish is, yeah, a little bit more tedious, but easily one of the most delicious fish on the planet. Yeah, and you notice that this meat has a different texture because it has additional collagen, more than normal in a filet. So it's a little bit sticky, which creates a really nice texture. Then this trunk fish, once you're able to chisel through and separate the head from the body, you'll notice you know, that there are four primary filets. So take your seafood scissors, same thing you would use on a crab shell, so same density, and cut away the top portion, the dorsal portion of that body from the rest of the shell, which is empty at this point. And you'll notice how the two upper fillets kind of fall right out with only a ligament holding them in. And then the other two fillets are attached to the spine. Um, so you can either use those for stock or just clean them up and roast them themselves. They're absolutely amazing, of course, and perfectly healthy. And now to my grouper heads. I absolutely love these cheeks that you pull out of these giant red grouper heads. You know, you can get these from your local fishermen like I do, or, you know, a lot of uh, your markets now are selling these, these grouper heads, uh, so they're more widely available than they have been previously. But they're really quite simple. Just find that line right above the upper lip, uh, right at the jaw, peel apart the skin, and then you'll notice that beautiful flesh just chilling out. There's some tendons underneath it, so um, it's easier to trim the top portion of that while it's still in the cheek 
And then once you take it out, if you end up going a little bit too deep, then feel free, just be cautious. You want to get rid of some of those additional tendons and some of those veins, just leaving just that beautiful pink meat. And uh, you'll notice the texture of you know these cheeks have a different flavor profile and a completely different texture than the fillets that you're used to. These are chef's treats. So these are the one of the things I usually use for staff meal or if I have an abundance of, I'll maybe make a little special at a restaurant, but, but uh, they're just absolutely amazing. And you know, it's also important to use everything you possibly can out of these fish. You know, we want to appreciate the animal by using every part of it we possibly can, uh, leaving nothing to waste. Now it's important when making this pistachio crust that you're using raw, unroasted pistachios. That's why they're so green. Because once we put them in the oven, and then uh, also I'm going to use my culinary torch on them at the end, I don't want to roast already roasted pistachios because then you just lose a bunch of flavor and you can make the crust a little bit too hard. <laughs> Nobody wants to break a tooth. Um, but you know, this crust is really two simple ingredients. Just, some Italian breadsticks and those pistachios and you'll see later on along with a egg wash to adhere them to the fish it's really a simple and super delicious crust You know, I love the savory that black garlic adds to near anything you add it to. You know, it's that fermented, sticky, aged garlic. It's just so bright and flavorful. Um, and in this case, it's a strong component. So I don't want to use more than one clove of this in my dressing because otherwise it's going to become super powerful and I don't want it to overwhelm this dressing because this dressing already has makta tea curry, Korean mustard, and black garlic. So it's really important that you stick um, you know, very strictly to the recipe because otherwise one component will easily outweigh the other. And this is a really nice and balanced dressing that I'm sure you guys will end up using <laughs> for way more items than what we are today.
right, so now I'm gonna get the hollandaise made, which means melting my butter first. A lot of people ask me what the difference between duck eggs and regular eggs are. You notice this shell is super hard, and also the yolk itself is larger. It's more mass than a standard large chicken egg. And um, also, the flavor is different. I mean, some people can't tell the difference, you know, between different yolks, but, you know, I can tell the difference between each animal. It all depends on your palate but it definitely has a textural difference in this hollandaise. This is gonna make it a little bit creamier, a little bit uh, a little bit more dense, and eggier as well, which is what I want out of a really good hollandaise. It's a really nice, creamy, eggy sauce. Just like any other sauce I make, I want to make sure that I'm straining my liquids to remove any of the hardened spices or the you know little pieces that are too big because I want something that's really smooth and creamy and delicate and you can't do that if you don't remove these extra particles because it's already blended all the flavor that it needs to to my sauce. And then of course during the cooking process, again as always, medium low to low. I never want to overheat any of my sauces. So in this case, I bring my water to a boil and then I quickly turn it down to a simmer so it's just light bubbles and I want my steel bowl to come to temperature slowly. And then if I notice that my sauce is thickening too quick, I'm gonna take the bowl away from the hot water. That way I don't turn it into scrambled eggs. So you wanna be really cautious. You never leave sight of your sauce. This is a process where you're whisking the entire time. It should only take four to six minutes for you to get this sauce to the texture you want. So you have to keep an eye on it and manage your heat well. Final salting should always be at the end. That way you know you don't have a, sa a sauce that's too salty. So give it a taste. Make sure your texture is where you want it to be. Give it a little salt if you need a little bit more season. And then let her cool. And she should thicken up to the exact texture we want, which we'll see later on when we plate. Wash is very simple. One whole egg and one teaspoon of spring water. That's it, just paint it on, just enough to cover the top layer, and then you're gonna sprinkle your pistachio crust on there, which of course we're gonna finish in the oven, and then I'm gonna use my culinary torch to get a little bit of char at the end for that extra bit of flavor, a little bit of that tartness. For my buck buck and my squirrel fish, all I used is just salt and pepper, and then just let them sweat a little bit, about 10 minutes before I begin the cooking process. So those, we want to keep the seasoning simple. That way we want to taste them all, taste every bit of it, because they're very delicate flavored fish, and we don't want to overwhelm them with anything else. This would be more of a butter poach than it would a pan fry because I never want my butter to get too high of a temperature because I'm not trying to brown the fat or burn the butter. 
I just want to use the butter to complete the cooking process because this fish only takes three, four minutes to cook max. So this is medium, low, medium, constant movement without you know breaking the actual meat itself. I got that fresh thyme in there to throw in a little additional flavor. And then of course, I'm gonna baste it with that butter. Just wanna make it as succulent as I can and then as much of that thyme as I can to the, to the fish. These I will not be finishing the oven. I'm gonna finish exactly as they are here on the plate. So unlike the buck buck and unlike the squirrel fish, my grouper cheeks, I'm going to start by poaching them in the butter and then I'm going to finish them in the broiler for a very short amount of time. They're in the broiler for no more than 90 minutes or 90 seconds. Um, and that's essentially enough to finish the cheeks. So we're getting the temperature we want, which should be 155 degrees. And also crust our pistachio as much as uh, it's able to in that short amount of time, which again is why we finish it with the culinary touch. Yampi root has to be my all-time favorite root vegetable. It's way starchier than you know the common potato that we're used to. Um, it's very common in South American countries, even uh, North and African, some Mediterranean. What I love about this is the starch disappears into the water pretty quick, leaving it to be a creamier texture than the standard potato. So you'll notice as we cut it here, you know, this is going to be a little bit more slippery. It's going to be a little bit sticky, but that's all right. That's a good thing. Now, if I were to make a puree, or if I'm going to have like, you know, more like a hash brown style, I will let this cook for maybe 12 minutes. In this case, I only let it cook for eight or nine minutes. Um, that way it doesn't become too soft on me because then it won't allow that second cook when we put it back in the oven and give it that nice roast. So this is essentially what it should look like. Thinningly clear on the outside and then nice dense yellow on the inside. Now when cutting up your fennel, everything that you see me moving away from the cutting board is going into a separate container which we use for a vegetable stock at a later date. So in here, I just want to cut away some of that inside and take the external layers off. Um, you can use a peeler if you'd like or you can use a knife. It's completely up to you, but you'll notice that beautiful green striping that comes from the fennel. That's what we want before we fry it because that's where all that flavor is. Again, this is a quick blanch. I'm putting it in that boiling water with just a little bit of salt. It's gonna be in there for no more than a minute. And then I'm gonna take it out, put it into an ice bath, which stops the cooking process. And you'll notice those green stripes become nice and bright and the white portions become nice and clear. Uh, feel free to eat one if you have some extra so you can really taste what that flavor is because that's like pure fennel deliciousness. I'm cutting through this yampi, making sure one, it has the texture that I need, but secondarily, by cutting through these slices, what you're doing is you're gonna allow it to cook evenly throughout the roasting process. And when we pour that butter over top of it and we have some of that coriander, we wanna make sure that we have an even amount of flavor and of course the texture that we're looking for. I love using tapioca starch 
on light flavored items like this fennel because although you'll notice it becomes sticky when it first hits the oil, it becomes crispier than a lot of your other starches and flours, but you don't taste as much of the actual coating as you do with flour, so you can taste the vegetable more. So if I have a light and delicate vegetable that I'm frying, I'm gonna use tapioca starch. That way I still get that crisp, but I can taste more of the vegetable itself. In this case, I used a soy oil. Again, because when you fry in soy oil, you don't taste the flavor of the oil at all. So again, it's gonna allow me to still get all that beautiful fennel, fennel flavor. So whenever you're frying, um, whether it be vegetables, meats, whatever, know your oil and know what starch you're using to coat it. That way you know how much flavor you wanna to lend to each one of those items. Again, I always like to have fun with plating. None of this is pre-designed, it's just as I go. In this case, I wanted to keep my mock de curry dressing and vinaigrette away from the rest. Um, you'll notice again, my hollandaise, the texture is perfect. How do we tell? Swipe the sauce, it doesn't enclose on itself. So have fun with it. Make sure that you're able to eat everything in a designed manner that kind of guides you to make sure you're getting all your flavor profiles and you're tasting everything you want to, but this came out absolutely delicious and uh, Finish it with that with that uh, seaweed, little roasted seaweed. So thanks again for everyone for checking us out. I hope you had some fun with this video. I know we did. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, let us know if there's anything again you want us to see. Thanks again, guys. See you until next time.